Happy Wednesday, Bridge family. My name is Brandon. I'm one of the youth leaders here at Bridge Church, and we are so excited for you for you to join us tonight. Uh, we have a powerful worship, powerful word, powerful time of offering tonight. Uh, we're going to hear from our campus director, Ali Badaraco, and she's going to be continuing the series, The Names of God. It's been a powerful series. I know Allie's got an amazing message tonight. Uh, just open your hearts, open your homes to her. She, she's going to uh, preach something special tonight. Uh, we have baptisms July 31st. Uh, we believe that all of God's people are to be buried with our Lord Jesus Christ in the waters of baptism. Everyone who confesses Christ should be baptized. Baptism represents a burial of the old way of life and mindset. You can sign up on our website at wearebridge.church. Uh, baptisms are amazing. I was baptized last year. Uh, it changed my life. It changed my perspective. Uh, it's one of those things that you bury the old and the new uh, you comes out. And uh, it's been an amazing year. And I just look forward to uh, baptisms every time we do them because you see that old life buried and that new person come out. Uh, Camp Freedom. It used to be the Camp Return. Now it's Camp Freedom for our men. That's going to be September 28th through October 2nd. Uh, during this four-day God-seeking experience, we anticipate God moving mightily in their lives during this time. Camp Freedom provides a setting where God's light shines into those dark places and sets men free. You can head to our website at wearebridge.church to sign up. I am going uh, this September. It's going to be amazing. I'm excited. Uh, there's a great group of guys that are going. It's going to be a powerful time for all the men. Uh, if you want your life changed, this is the camp to do it. Uh, this, from all the stories I've heard, it's amazing. Uh, let us know where you're streaming from, Bridge Family. Uh, we are excited that our online community is growing, and we want to connect with you. We want to get to know you more, get to know your family, where you're streaming from, and the ways that we can help. We want to be able to reach you. Just a reminder that we have Sunday and Wednesday services available on Facebook and Twitter. You can go back, watch, and share with a friend. If you're at work and you're bored, go ahead and just pop in one of those old uh, messages from Pastor Landon, Allie, Josh. Uh, it's one of those powerful things that if you need that, uh, pick me up at work. Go ahead and listen to one of those messages. If you would like prayer, you can message us, comment here, or email us privately at prayer at wearebridge.church. Uh, again, tonight's going to be a powerful message. Get off your feet, and we're getting ready for worship. Good evening, Bridge Church! This is the day that you have made, whatever comes, I won't complain, for all my hope is in your name, and now your joy awaits my praise.
I don't want to leave your presence. And I was like, oh my gosh. You know, we're singing about how we never want to leave his presence. And here he is saying, I don't want to leave yours. And, oh, man, that, if that doesn't make you feel good, like the God of the universe, he doesn't want to be away from you for a second. And so it just it's such a sweet presence in here. And so I just, it's like, I don't want to leave it. Um, but I just, I wanted to tell you that because I, that was so powerful to me. And so just hang on to that and just don't forget it, that he wants to be with you just as much. So, well, welcome, and what a wonderful way to start off our evening. Oh my gosh, it's Wednesday, and we're in the presence of God. <laughs> yeah. Well, before you're seated, turn and say hi to a few people, and then go ahead and have some. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome. My name is Joy, and I'm really excited to be here, and I'm just, I'm just loving it. I mean, like I said, it's Wednesday, and we already are f- already full-blown into the presence of God. It, how awesome is that? Um, well, before we get started, I do want to welcome any first-time guests that we have. So if you're here online or in person, we welcome you. If you are here for the first time and you've never gotten your free gift, maybe you this is not your first time, but you didn't get your free gift, we do have a gift for you. So uh, go to the information desk and check it out and just find ways that you can get plugged in. Um, I have a few announcements for you guys tonight. Uh, first is for the ladies. Uh, we have our vibrant mini conference. Not mini, sorry. Last year, mini conference. This year, full conference. Yeah. <laughs> Two days, two days. So um, that's coming up, and you have until the 31st to get registered for the early bird rate. So go ahead and get signed up. Save your seat because it does fill up. So I don't want anyone to miss out. It's going to be just a beautiful time together. So if you haven't been to any of our vibrant events, they are always wonderful. So get signed up, get signed up, get signed up. (laughs) Um, The next announcement is for the men. See, you get one too. So I didn't leave you out. Yeah, man. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, man. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, well, anyway, you, as you can see, Camp Freedom's coming up. And if you have not been to Camp Freedom, you need to sign up. Yeah! Okay. <laughs> Um, it is a life-changing event for our men, and if you haven't been, talk to some men who have gone, and I'm sure they'll tell you how awesome it is. But I uh, get signed up. They limit the spots so they can spend just quality time uh, with the men that go. And uh, so get signed up. And if you're anything like my husband, get your wife to sign you up online because we know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true statement. Um, And finally, this Sunday, we have a guest speaker. We have Allison Walwork in the house. And she is an author, a speaker, and just a friend of this house. And every time she's come to town, it's been an awesome word. And I get so much out of it. I take lots and lots of notes because she talks fast, and you better write it down. (laughs) But it's really good. So make sure you're here on Sunday for a powerful word. Um, Well, now it's time for our worshiping in our giving and guys I love to give and I know at Bridge Church we are a generous we're a generous church and we love to give and you know it's like we love God because he first loved us right I mean that's in the Bible we love him because he first loved us well guess what we give to God because he first gave to us he gave the ultimate gift his son and so We just give out of this abundance of gratitude. And even that first song we sang, you know, I give thanks for all that you've done. And so I just encourage you tonight just to give out of that heart of gratitude and love for our Father who has given so much for you. 
and he never fails. He always blesses us, and you know, he's faithful, he is faithful, he is faithful, and he will never let you down, he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you. So as you prepare your gift, um, we have lots of ways to give here at Bridge. You can give online, you can give on the app, you can text to give. We have drop boxes at either exit, and um, so plenty of ways to give, but just get that gift in your hand if you're giving on your phone. I always pray over my phone because we know it needs it. So take your gift in your hand and let's pray. God, we just thank you so much for your sweet, sweet presence in this place tonight, and just ministering to us as we worship you and for wanting to be with us and we just bring our gift to you God out of this heart of gratitude because you've loved us so much and you've given so much to us that we can't help but give back to you and so we just bless you in this uh, time and we just offer up our gift and we just ask that you bless the gift and bless each giver in Jesus name amen all right well go ahead and stand up to your feet We're going to go back into worship. We've got one more song, and we're going to have our prayer team come down, and they're going to be up here to pray for you. So if you need prayer for anything, just come on down, and let's just get right back in. It was so precious and so beautiful, so let's just get right back in. Let's not skip a beat. Let's worship.
tonight. You are good. You are worthy. You are in this house, God. We lay everything at your feet. We worship you. We hold nothing back tonight, God. We're not hiding anything. We're not just playing church. We didn't come here on a Wednesday night to just check it off a box, to check it off our list, God. But we're here to encounter you. We're here to hear from you tonight, Lord. And we thank you that you are here, that you are in this place. And we worship you with everything inside of us. And you are so worthy, Lord. You are so worthy. We thank you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, church, is he worthy tonight? Is he good? Is he faithful? Is he our peace, our comforter? He is so good. I'm so thankful to be in the house of God with you tonight. We are going to stay standing for the reading of the word. And we're reading from Jeremiah tonight, Jeremiah 23, 6. It'll be on the screen behind me. And it says, in his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel, Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Everybody say the Lord, our righteousness. God, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that you are here and you are in this place. You are our righteousness. You are covering us. You are protecting us and leading and guiding us. I pray that you would speak tonight. Remove me from this stage, Lord, but do whatever you want to do and speak through me. Speak to your people. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bridge Church, give it up one more time. As you take your seat, tell somebody happy midweek service. Happy midweek service. We're glad that y'all are here tonight. My name is Allie and I am honored to get to share the word with you. I love being on our speakers team and being able to speak and share the word of God. Our senior pastors, if it is your first time, Pastor Landon and Pastor Emily Merrill are our senior pastors and they give their love to all of you tonight and they'll be back Sunday. Like Joy said, we have a guest speaker, but they'll be here and I'm super excited for Allison. So make sure that you're here this Sunday, but Tonight we are continuing our Names of God series, and it has been incredible, right? It has been amazing, all the speakers, the team, everyone has done such an incredible job, and God has spoken so much through this series, and we're a note-taking church, so you can get your Bibles, get your notebooks out, because we take the Word of God seriously. So we are going to talk about the name of God tonight, Jehovah Sidkenu. Jehovah Sid Canoe, and that is a fun one to say. The more you say it, it gets easier, but that is how you spell it. So it's Jehovah Sid Canoe, and that is from that scripture that we just read from Jeremiah. It is the Lord our righteousness. 
the Lord our righteousness. And this comes from the book of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was a prophet who received one of, I think, the toughest assignments in the Old Testament. He got a call to lead a very stubborn people. God called him to lead these people and then informed him that the people were not going to listen to him, were not going to follow him, and they were actually going to reject him. But he said, I'm going to call you to do this. He actually called him as a young boy. He called him as a teenager, and he immediately began to prepare him for what he was going to do. He was born towards the end of the reign of King Josiah, and that was the last good king of Judah. And his leadership comes at a time of moral, political, and religious decline. And then it goes into the Babylonian exile. So Jeremiah has a tough assignment in front of him. And he begins to do this, and he begins to speak these prophetic words at the most unhappy time, right? These people are not happy. They don't want to hear what he has to say. And God tells him to deliver a message of hard, critical evaluation, Rather than salvation, you know, the feel-good message, like Jesus loves you, he gives him a hard message to deliver that we need to get our act together, we need to get our life together, we need to get back to our values, and he has Jeremiah do this, so you can think of him as like a new CEO, right? He's going to this business, and he needs to take it and turn it back into a good business. It has been crashing and burning, and he needs to take it and make it something great again. And he can't fire anybody. He can't get rid of anybody. And actually, they reject him. They don't even like him. But he is called to do this. And I love it because Jeremiah never loses hope. He is called the weeping prophet because of how many tears he shed over these people. He never lost his compassion. He never lost his vision for the call that God gave to him. And this is so important for us because there's a difference of living called versus driven. And I want to just touch on that tonight before we get into righteousness. But there's a difference of living called and driven. Because when you're just driven, you're just motivated. You're kind of going through the motions. You get inspired every once in a while. You're motivated. But we don't always feel driven, right? Can I get an amen? Like, we don't always feel motivated to get out of bed, to go to work, to go to school, to take care of the house. We don't always feel driven, but when you live called, that is different. Because when you're living called, you have a purpose, you have an anointing, and it's not just for your job and the city you're in, but you are called as a son and a daughter of God. You have been called, and God loves you and sees you, and it's a difference, right, when you're living driven versus called. Because when you're living called, we go above and beyond in everything. We go above and beyond in even the little things that seem insignificant, like putting the grocery cart back where it goes or just like leaving it in the parking lots or when you're at the grocery store and you just pick something and then you just put it somewhere random and you're like, how will they know? They're never going to know. And I'm guilty of both of those things, but we do this and we're, you know, it's little, it's insignificant, but there's ways where we can go above and beyond. We can put it back where it goes, right? We can put the cart where it goes. We can clean up our table at the restaurant. There's these little things because When I think about Jesus and what Jesus would have done, I'm sure he took the time to go put the cart back right where it went, that he went and put that box of cereal right back on the shelf, right? I can see Jesus doing that because he went above and beyond in even those little small things. And that shows the difference of living driven versus called. And I have these questions that you can ask yourself You don't have to write them down. There's a lot of them. So I just want you to listen to them. And it kind of helps us tell if you're living driven or you're living called. So if you are living driven, do you need affirmation before you feel good about something? Do you spend more time online than with Jesus? Do you compare your results to someone else's results? Do you constantly look to arrive at some achievement? Do you live frustrated with your lack of opportunity? Do you check your numbers all the time? Do you get anxious when you are not performing? Do you think of how others can elevate you? Do you share your weaknesses publicly before sharing them privately? 
those are hard questions, right? Like I was like, oh my gosh, God, that is hard. And I know when we can tell when we can answer yes to some of those that we're living driven, that we're just living motivated. We're not living on the called side because called people have nothing to lose and nothing to prove. Called people celebrate other people's successes easily. Called people enjoy the work that God has for them. Called people are comfortable confessing weaknesses and sin. Called people seek to recognize others. Called people enjoy Jesus. Called people prioritize real life relationships over significance. And called people think of how they can elevate others. There's a difference of living called versus driven. And when I think of Jeremiah, he was living a called life. And God wants all of us to live a called life, to walk in that calling and to walk in the purpose and the freedom that he has for us. Not just to live driven, but to live called. Amen. So tonight, that's just extra. As we go into righteousness, I want us to live called because that's such a huge part of this word tonight. So there's a difference. And Jeremiah was teaching these people and speaking to them, and they're not really listening. They're rejecting him. And then God gets involved. And God says in Jeremiah 23, verses 5, so this is before that verse 6 that we read. Verse 5 says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. So this is a messianic prophecy. God is revealing something that he is going to do. He's saying, I'm going to bring forth a branch. I'm going to bring an extension of myself, something that fathers me, and I'm going to bring it out. And that is Jesus Christ. That is the Messiah. So he's saying what he's going to do here. And he says, he is going to become the righteous savior. He's going to become the righteousness for all of us. And then that's where it says in verse 6, in his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called. And he's talking about Jesus. So Jesus will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. He is our righteousness. The definition of righteousness is acting in accord with divine or moral law. It pretty much means free from guilt, free from sin, morally right. And a lot of the time in the church, we say that righteousness is right standing with God. You're in right standing with God. And righteousness is truly a biblical subject because it is in the Bible, the word righteousness over 302 times in the Bible. And then the word just righteous is found 238 times in the Bible. So it means that it's what is doing right. Righteousness is doing what is right. And righteousness is an attribute of God because God is perfect. God is just. He never does anything wrong. God always does what is right. He is never changing. He is consistent and he will never not be righteous. He will always be righteous. And when we say that, we mean that there is no wrong. There is no dishonesty. There is nothing bad in God. He is completely good. And it says in Psalms 119, 142, that Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. So that is God, right? God is righteous. God is perfect. But for us, that's a whole nother story, right? We are not righteous. We're not perfect. We are, we make a ton of mistakes. We as humans are so flawed, And to live in righteousness means that you're living in right standing with God. And for me, this was so hard because I was like, how do you even get like in right standing with God when we are constantly making mistakes, constantly sinning? We, it's so hard and we can't be perfect. So how do we get in right standing with God? Well, we can work hard. We can do the promotions, right? We can come to church all the time. We can read our Bible, right? We can do all the things that sound good. We think, we think that we can earn God's righteousness, but that's not true. That is not the case. We will never be able to earn God's righteousness. Amen. 
we won't ever be able to because we aren't perfect. And we try to, even with parents, with families, we try to earn people's approval. We try to earn their love. We try to do that with people. So we think, well, I should do that with God. I need to try to earn God's love, earn his approval, earn the righteousness. But I never will be able to do that. You will never be able to do that. We can't earn God's righteousness based on our good works. And this is a huge topic. And as I kept diving into this, I was like, this is a huge topic to talk about. Righteousness is so important and it's so crucial and it can be so big. And as Jeremiah, I felt like Jeremiah, like I'm bringing this hard topic. Like why couldn't I get a good, fun, easy word, right? But righteousness is at the heart of God. And righteousness is a biblical topic. Topic. So tonight, I have three things that I want you to take home about the righteousness of God. What we can take home that are simple, that are easy, and how we can understand righteousness. So those three points. The first one is that it's not earned. It's given through exchange. Righteousness is not earned, but it's given through exchange. And this is the unique thing about God's righteousness is that he sees you as approved and there is nothing that we could ever do to earn God's approval. And it's unique, but it's also a relief because it takes the burden off of us. We don't have to carry that weight of being perfect. We don't have to carry the weight of trying to gain God's approval, but he looks at us and he says, I love you. Like Joy said, he wants to spend time with you. He wants to be your best friend. He loves you and he sees you as approved and worthy and it can't be earned, but it is, it's given through exchange. And that is a pressure that we can take off of ourselves that we don't have to carry because we're made righteous in God's eyes. And that happens when we accept him into our heart. When we receive salvation, when we choose Jesus, then we are made righteous in his eyes. And we can't grow in righteousness, but we can grow, we can get stronger. And then that has, that has to do with our holiness, right? Because then we sin less and we'll get into that in a little bit. But it's, we'll talk more about that because we can grow stronger in it. But we can't grow in our righteousness. So God sees us as righteousness. And it made me think of the story of the prodigal son. How there were the two sons and there was the dad. And one of the sons came to him one day and said, Dad, I want my share of the state. I want all my money. Give me your money. Give me my money. I'm going to take it. And he went and he laid with the pigs, laid with the prostitutes, did all these crazy things. And he did all his money, spent it all away. And then he comes back to his dad. And he says, I'm not worthy to be called your son. And he says, I'm not worthy to be called your son, but he still is his son. It didn't take that away. His sin distanced him from his father. It made a distance, but it didn't take away the fact that he was a son, that his father never left him. His father never changed. His father was waiting for him to come home. And it was so good. He's waiting for us to come home. It doesn't take away the fact when we sin, it just, it creates distance and And God doesn't want that. God wants us close and he wants us near to him. But we are still a son or daughter. It doesn't take away our righteousness. And I thought of this story and there's this whole side of this one son. But then there's this other side of the other son. Because the other son stayed home and he worked. But he was unhappy. And he was jealous. And he was not happy when the brother came home and his dad said, let's have a huge party and let's celebrate you, the prodigal son. He was not happy because he said, I've worked for you all these years and I've been here and I've been consistent and I've waited and I've been here for you. And I thought of this story because, you know, I always thought, well, I can't really relate to that other brother. Like I never had that season of life where I was really like into partying or I went to college and got crazy. I never had that. I was just a good kid. We were in California this week with my siblings and my younger sister is 16 
And she's a great kid, but she loves being around people. She's an extrovert. She always is gone from the house. Like my parents are always like, where are you going? What are you doing? Because she loves to do things. And they were talking about curfews. And I was like, I never even had a curfew. Cause I was like, I didn't even know you could do things. Like I just thought you went home. Like I didn't even know there was another option. So I was such a good kid that I never really had this phase of life that I was like, I can't really compare or I don't relate to this story. But then as God showed me this, I was like, God really revealed to me that I can relate to the brother that stayed home and worked because I stayed home and I worked for something that was already mine. And I was here and I was unhappy and I was working and striving for things. And I thought that my worth would be in my work or that my worth or my happiness would finally, when I got to this point, then I would be happy. Then I would feel what I was supposed to feel. But that's not the reality because we can't earn it, but it is given to us. The righteousness of God is given through exchange. When we receive Jesus, we can't earn it. We will never do anything to earn it or deserve it, but it is given to us. And it is a gift that God wants us to receive tonight. And I related to that brother that stayed home and either side of the story that you relate to, to the brother that left and came back or the brother that stayed home and worked, you are righteous. You are a son. You are a daughter. And God sees you that way. And he sees you in that light. So when you sin, it's not like there's a judge pointed an, pointing an arrow at your head, right? But it's a God that is saying, I want to pick you back up again. Let's go. Let's get back on track. Let's keep moving forward. That is the father that is looking down at us when we mess up and when we sin because it's given through this exchange. So that's the first point. The second point, the second thing to know about righteousness is that it's not bought, it's paid for. It's not bought, it's paid for. Because the fact is that the price of our righteousness, all of the money in the world could not buy our righteousness. It has already been paid for. That is good news because God would never ask you to buy something that we can't afford. But he's saying, I already paid for this. I already sacrificed my son on the cross. He took on our sin. And he's saying, I did this for you so that you could be righteous in me. He took on our sin, and that is what Jesus did on the cross for us. He took that on, and then we, now we can be confident that we are righteous in God. It says in Romans 3.24, that yet God graciously declares that we are righteous. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. It says it right there that Jesus did this on the cross. He paid for our sins and now we are made righteous in him and through him. And that's what Jesus did for us. And we can be sure that we'll be accepted by the father, that we can stand before him and say we are righteous because we're in Jesus, because we're in relationship with him. So it's not earned. It's given through exchange. It's not bought. It's been paid for. And the third one is that once you receive it, now it's time to walk in it. And this is the challenge for all of us tonight, that I want you to be challenged. I want you to be called to this because once we receive this righteousness and we can feel it and we receive it and accept it into our life, Now it's time to walk in it. Now it's time to move forward in it, to live in righteousness. Because righteousness, like we said, it's not human perfection. You don't have to be perfect. We're always going to mess up. But God says that we are righteous. In Romans 3.22, it says we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for anyone, everyone who believes, no matter who we are, turn your neighbor and say, even you (laughs) turn to the other one, say, even you, even you, 
all of us who are imperfect, who have made so many mistakes, we are righteous by putting our faith in Christ Jesus. Once we receive it, now it's time to walk in it, to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. Because to live for righteousness means that we wholeheartedly realize that sin does not please God. Living in sin doesn't please God. And because of that, we want to pursue holiness. We want to pursue righteousness and holiness in our life because we want God to transform our minds, our thoughts, our actions, that we are righteous in every part of our life, that we can pursue that, that we can chase after that. And we know it. It says in Philippians 4, 8, that whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Think about those things. To live for righteousness means that God is going to transform our minds. He's going to transform our hearts and transform our thoughts. Our thought patterns need to be transformed, need to be made righteous, to focus on him and to put our thoughts in him. Because I think for most of us, when we have the Holy Spirit in us, you can tell when you're not in right standing with God. We can tell when we're not really walking in righteousness, when we're maybe are living in sin or messing up and we feel that conviction from the Holy Spirit and we know that that's not how we're supposed to live, that there is better for us, that God has more for us and that is living in righteousness and God wants us to live a life of righteousness and to walk in it and to walk it out because that is how you shine his light. That's how you people see you and they say, they're different They're not like everybody else. They walk differently. They talk differently. And that's when we're living in the righteousness. And it's only available as a gift, right? God gives it to us as a gift by what his son did on the cross, what Jesus did by shedding his blood for us. And we are made righteous in Jesus Christ. And for some of us, we may think, I'm way too far gone. I've messed up way too much. I've done too many bad things. I've made too many mistakes. And there's no way that I could be made righteous. There's no way. And there's people in the Bible who thought that same thing. But there are people who were still called righteous in the Bible. Abel was called righteous in Hebrews 11. Noah, Daniel, and Job were grouped together as those who were righteous. The apostle Peter called Noah a preacher of righteousness. Lot was also called a righteous man. The parents of John the baptizer were also described as righteous before God. Even Pontius Pilate, who did not receive Jesus as Lord, he said that even Jesus led a righteous life. He could look at him and see that he led a righteous life. So I encourage you tonight, I want us to take that challenge as I close that we are called to live a righteous life, that God is calling us to more. We are made righteous in him. And because of that, then we're called to walk in it, to live differently and to think differently and talk differently. And he is calling us out into that. So I want us to pray tonight. We're going to pray that righteousness would cover our thoughts, our actions, that righteousness would cover every part of our life, that that we would think on those things like that verse said. And I challenge us as we're doing this, as you're praying, you know, for righteousness, every hour that you're awake, take one minute and turn your thought back to Jesus. Turn your thoughts back to God. Of every waking hour that we're awake, just one minute, I have been doing it and it has changed my thoughts. It has changed my feelings because we're saying, I'm going back in tune with you. I'm putting my focus back on you. So I dare you, church, do that and see what God can do. See what he will change in your life. See what he will transform and do and the miracles that will come from it when you put your focus back on him. When it's just one minute of each hour, I challenge you to do that this next, the next 30 days, next week, whatever you want to do, I challenge you to do that. 
So we're going to pray tonight, and I want to pray for you. I want to pray for us to walk in righteousness, but also if you want to receive the Lord as your Savior, if you haven't received him yet as Lord of your life, then this is your opportunity. This is your moment where you get to do that. So we're going to bow our heads. We're going to close our eyes, and this is your moment. This is your chance. This is your opportunity where you get to dedicate your life. Or if you want to say, Lord, I choose you. I want to walk in righteousness. Maybe you haven't done it in a long time. You want to rededicate or you want to do it for the first time. Whatever you're feeling, whatever the Lord is stirring in your heart. If that is you, I want you to lift your hand right now online, in-house. If you feel that and I see those hands, I see the hands in-house, online. God, I thank you that you are bringing righteousness over us, that we are called to live a righteous life. And we receive that right now. We want to walk in it. We want to talk like it. We want to believe that, Lord. We thank you that you are here, that we receive you, Lord. And I want you, all of everybody in this house, everyone just repeat after me. Say, dear Lord, Lord, you are are my Lord and Savior. Savior. I I receive you now as Lord of my life. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. I'm forever yours. And I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, give it up. That is a powerful decision. And if you made it for the first time or the thousandth time that we say that prayer together, believe it, that you are righteous in God's eyes. That when you leave this place tonight, when you walk out those doors, he sees you as that. He sees you as approved, as loved, and he is looking down on you with so much love in his heart. And that we're called to live a life that is glorifying to him. And when we seek holiness, when we seek righteousness, and we seek to do the right thing, to be close to him, that is pleasing to him. That is so amazing to him. And he wants to be with us. He wants to be close with us. So I'm glad that y'all came tonight. Thank you for coming out to midweek service. It was a great night. If you want to go ahead and stand, we're going to speak this bridge declaration And then we will be dismissed. Like Joy said, make sure you're here this Sunday. And if a lot of you, I know, work on Sundays, that's why you're here. You're our faithful midweek crew, and we're so glad. So make sure that you stream on Sunday. Get the word into your heart. But continue to walk it out. Continue to, you guys are doing so great. And I'm so proud, and I just love our church. Don't you love our church, our people, our community? I'm so proud of y'all. So let's. Speak this bridge declaration and then we'll be dismissed and have a great week. I am a bridge builder. This is my season of favor. I am blessed to live my best. I will choose to love him first. I will worship fully, love deeply, and my community will thrive because I am praying for it. I am a carrier of peace. I will represent God's gentleness to myself and others. I will live out his gospel. I am blessed to live my best because I am a bridge builder. We love you, bridge